As most of you know, uh, the front of the Model S has an extra space in it, an extra trunk space, which most people call the frunk, um, because there's no engine, um, so you get free cargo space. But I noticed when I was looking at um, you know pictures and videos of the Model S before I had one, it's pretty hard to gauge sort of the um, absolute size of the cargo space, especially the frunk, um, from just the relative uh, size um, estimation that you get from pictures and videos. So I thought I would do a video of what fits in the frunk. And to do that, I have with me a collection of um, empty stuff. I've got a regular sized uh, book box. Um, I've got a medium sized uh, suitcase, a smaller suitcase, a duffel type one, and then a, a Costco um, insulated carry tote might be helpful. So let's get started. Um, first, to open up the uh, frunk, let's get the key. Double click um, sort of where the sloped false windshield uh, meets the hood. Um, it unlatches and then you just push it up and there it is. Okay, we'll move it in just a little bit closer like this uh, so that you can see. So first of all, um, let me just orient, orient you to this space. Uh, so the front, uh, the um, yeah, the hood slopes down pretty low, and you can see it's just above my knee here. This is about 24, 25 inches, well actually 25, 26 inches high. Um, so you know if you're getting stuff out of here, you're going to be bending uh, pretty low. Um, second thing uh, to remember, at least in my case, is that I have the dual motor, so that um, that's right under here, and that takes about, you know, um, I don't know, maybe a third or uh, three-fifths of my space here. So that would not be the case if you don't have the dual motor. You have quite a bit more space in the front trunk if you just have uh, the rear wheel drive. So let me give you some dimensions here. For me, this is uh, 38 inches across with a base depth of 13 and a half inches, and then a height in the back of 14 inches, and a height in the front of nine and a half inches. So that's how much space we have to deal with. And again, the depth, if I didn't have the back motor here, I would have a depth of about, um, I don't know, 25, 26 inches, something like that. Um, and the reason for the funny shape, like there's these little steps here, is that there's a lot of stuff crammed under here. Um, I have a I have a video um, also on my channel of the framework with the shocks and the battery uh, that I filmed in 4K that shows you all the crazy stuff that, that's under here. I mean, there's the motor, and then there's you know um, shocks and struts and stuff over there, and then there's the the frame, the body frame. So a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of stuff is crammed under there, but it's great that we have some extra space here. Um, all right, so let's see what fits. First, we'll start off with the Costco bag. Boom, there it is. Now, I don't have anything full of goods or anything. I'll try to balloon it up like that. This is uh, 24 inches wide, and it's 16 inches tall. It's just a little bit too tall um, to fit by itself, but I mean normally you're not buying 16-inch tall bottles or something. So you know if it was if it was crunched down or something, it would be fine. Uh, or laying on its side, and um, you know I've got a almost a full hand, extended hand uh, breadth over here, so lots of space with the Costco bag. Next is a duffel bag. Again, not full of junk. Uh, this is 22 inches by 13 inches. Um, it's probably better to have a bag with a soft top because that, that's a little bit easier to squish down with the hood if you need to do that. Um, but there's a little bit of wiggle room here. Um, and you know, if this was pretty packed, you'd probably take up most of the depth here, but there's actually still a little bit of um, 
space up here that you could put some flat items. And then, you know, my uh, compressed hand fits right here, and then obviously we've got some space here. So, yeah, there's that one. Back. Next is carry-on, small carry-on. This fits quite snugly in this dimension. Um, across, this is 20 and a half inches by about 14 and a half by, I don't know, eight and a half or something like that. And again, this isn't packed or anything, but it's uh, rigid on the bottom. So as, as this kind of angles, um, it's pretty tight in there, but I've got, you know, I've got four fingers on this side. And I've got four fingers, actually five fingers on that side. Um, so there's plenty of room. Um, I might be able to get the hood down if I have it on its side. Um, probably could if it wasn't stuffed too much. And then I've got about a hand breadth here. So, but either way, even if I've got it flat down, I've definitely got space here. You could probably get one or two backpacks in here again. So that's with the small, small carry-on. This is about the size that airlines want you to have. But the size that you want to, that you know travelers always want to take is this guy here. So this guy is 24 by 9 by 18, fairly sizable. Um, and if I tried to put the, the hood down on top of this, um, this is, you know, this is solid here with the wheels. I, I don't think I could compress that enough. It might put a, put sort of a dent in my hood. Um, you know, lengthwise though, it's okay. Still got maybe four fingers on this side and a full hand on the front here, but I don't really, in this particular model, I, I don't think I could quite fit this um, in here. But again, if, if you're just using a soft duffel bag, it's a lot easier to cram stuff in the way it, it's supposed to fit. And finally, just your standard book box. Um, 16 by 10 and a half uh, by 12 and a half. Um, you know, it's not too big of a box because you really don't want to be lifting more, bu more books um, than this. This would be pretty heavy. Um, lots of room on either side. You could probably put a backpack, medium-sized backpack, at least on this side. Maybe on both sides if you scrunched it down. Um, yeah, so you got more room here. You have no more room here. Um, so maybe a few flat items on the back. Um, or, you know, a grocery bag or something like that. So, again, if it wasn't for this front motor, I could fit a lot more stuff here. Um, but, you know, being in a snow area, it's definitely worth having the, having the motor. Um, so, yeah. So, it's a super helpful space, um, and I hope that was helpful, just showing uh, how some various items fit relative uh, to the space that you see. And uh, one last thing, I just want to show you how you're supposed to close this, because the Tesla salespeople, they often emphasize this. Um, it's it's kind of not like a normal latch for some reason, I really don't know why, but so you can see the latch here. You're not supposed to put a lot of pressure directly over it. Uh, so you just let it come to a rest there. And then on either side of the latch, uh, just use your palms and kind of smoothly just push it into the latch and there it's done. So, all right, well, thanks for watching and I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.